It's July 27th, 2017. You're listening to the Fancy Ramen Podcast, Omake, covering Yusha Yoshihiko, episode 10, 11, and 12. Would you like to introduce yourself, Neil? I'm Neil. <laughs> you know, we didn't actually introduce ourselves last Omake, did you notice? <laughs> oh, well, we should have. I mean, I'm not. Good thing. Not good thing it. I caught it now. Yeah. Only a week later. <laughs> I'm Cookie, and I'm Scott, and I'm happy we're finished with this series. Oh my god! Yeah, I. I'm gonna be honest. I pulled a you guys today and got off work and watched all three episodes. <laughs> I I really was Wait, not so looking forward to watching any of this anymore. Quick. Quick question, because I I'm not actually sure I I determined exactly what was going on with Neil's end. But Neil, did you watch all three episodes today? Yes, I did as well. Wow! So today was the first time that we all watched all three episodes within the same period of time. <laughs> we all could have just been in one room together watching it and making fun of it, and I think we would have yeah. enjoyed it much more. We could have had a Google Hangouts together while watching it. No, that would have been that would have been nice. Oh well. well. We'll have to do it next time. Maybe no. something more entertaining. There we go. That would there work we go. too. So I guess to kick it off, it sounds like everybody's kind of formed their opinion about how they feel watching 12 episodes of this and whether they think it's worth their time or not. I think my feelings can be summed up by one statement. This show would have been better if it were 12 and a half minutes long per episode. Totally. That's just like, that's like this, the perfect amount of time. 11 minute episodes. It's just beautiful. Plus, there was only about 11 minutes worth of actually funny stuff in some episodes. Yeah. So, and in others that were total duds would have been shorter at least. So, instead of going into each episode, let's actually scratch that idea and just talk about what we liked about them as a whole. Like, I, actually, I have a question first go ahead. before that. Since we're not talking about each episode individually, what did you guys think of the payoff of Yoshihiko's sister? Oh my gosh. I, you still have no idea how she gets there at all. She's, she just ends up there. And you have to piece together how she went from all these different roles to ultimately marrying into what royalty. i guess was noble society yeah royalty in a loveless marriage i love it when he asks the question he's like wait is this a loveless marriage and she's <laughs> just like yeah duh how did you not realize that <laughs> and i don't know how to feel like maybe overall i felt positive that they actually drew this running gag into a plot point because episode 10 maybe felt like it had more substance than many of the other episodes it felt like there was more storytelling and plot going on. Which we have but, already agreed is actually to the detriment of the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, which one was episode 10? Was that hers? That what? was the Iron Chef cook-off. Oh, yeah, you're right. Man. Oh, it's been so long since I've watched this epi- these episodes. <laughs> I don't remember anything. <laughs> it's been like 60 minutes since I started the first episode. Um watching them yeah, at 1.5 the, speed this is the episode that that i went ahead and uh put a quick note that says um our heroes uh ellipse give a parrot to some horrible child actor worse than dakota fanning <laughs> <laughs> oh you like dakota i i just wanted to uh be mean to dakota fanning i actually i mean i haven't seen any of her recent work but she's got recent work I, I mean, I assume she did. If she doesn't, then maybe my uh, <laughs> dig on her acting was accurate. Here are some quotes that Google has provided for us from Dakota Fanning. Courtney Love is really cool and funny. I would like to meet Julia Roberts and Cameron Diaz. I think I could play their daughters. My dad named me Dakota. And my mom came up with my first name, Hannah. So it's Hannah Dakota Fanning. ER was one of my favorites. I played a car accident victim who has leukemia. I got to wear a neck brace and nose tubes for the two days I worked. When are these quotes taken? (laughs) (laughs) They're literally, if you look up Dakota Fanning on Google. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. That you could just look up quotes by people. And usually they're great 
and completely irrelevant. Now I've got to find the Biebers, the Biebs. Well, while you're looking that up, I did really enjoy the auction scene. I don't know if it was meant to be a direct reference to uh, Final Fantasy VI, but it sure as hell felt like it. Uh, if you're not familiar with the auctions in Final Fantasy VI, uh, they more or less auction off like certain treasures and items, and uh, the prices are pretty normal, but sometimes you get these weird items, like a one one millionth scale model of the airship that you later drive, or a uh, your own chocobo, and the bidding starts at normal prices and then suddenly like this this kid keeps asking his dad to get it and the dad's like no we don't need it until the kid finally gets his way and the dad ends up bidding millions of gill on it (laughs) so that yeah i mean it wasn't like verbatim the exact same thing but it really felt like it had that type of spirit to it with Hisa betting that much 300 million yen i think it was which is the equivalent of more or less three million dollars not nice. exactly, but a good ballpark. Right, yeah. I always use, uh, what is it, one one hundredth scale when I'm estimating uh, yen versus USD. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the easiest way. Like, I, I know it, it, yeah. it doesn't it, apply it, entirely, but it works out. And it, it starts to have some, like, pretty big magnitudes of error when you get to the really high values. But at <laughs> least when I'm doing something like Persona, totally makes sense that I'm I'm buying bread for... You know, 500 bucks. yen. 50 cents for a little loaf of bread. That's cool. That makes Wait, sense. Wait, that, that's $5. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did I say 500? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. That is $5. But don't $5 worry, that's the really special of bread melon bread. Actually, still not that bad. Proud of you. Like, all of your drinks are about 120, 150 yen, which is like... Buck 50, buck yeah, 20. That, that's which is accurate. applicable. Yeah. Um... As for other things in that in that particular episode, uh, I don't I don't want to go too far, but uh, the Monty Python and Holy Grail bridge challenge really felt lackluster to me. And again, in the same vein as the Killer Rabbit, Killer Koala, Killer Squirrel reference, it's the bad version of the joke. Yeah. Yeah. Although and agreed, I I did appreciate how uh, the first question was uh, from directed towards who do Murasaki. you like? Who do you yeah, have a crush who do you on? like? And Marib and Donjo are both like, oh, 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 no, yeah, who who do you like? And they're like all acting so confident that it's them, right? And I did. You also notice this is sort of relevant, and and I'll make sure to tie back into it, but. Have you noticed that as the episodes progress, is it me or does Yoshihiko just get dumber? Like he just makes worse and worse decisions or they play him as an idiot more frequently, I guess. I I, think you asked the same question last week. Yeah, exactly. The answer was yes. And so I think it's getting progressively worse in this too. And I'm not saying that it's exemplified by this scene in which he has absolutely no idea that, uh, what is it, Murasaki could, could ever have a crush on him, but his obliviousness just keeps reaching new heights. And, and I both appreciate it and find it kind of, I don't know, surprising because the steadfast and determined hero that we see in the first couple episodes has more or less started to deteriorate the further the uh, quest has gone on. I kind of read that whole scene as him like not giving a shit, but he obviously has to by later episodes, as we'll probably talk about. Right, right. This episode maybe, and and maybe this whole collection of episodes did kind of teach me that Donjo's acting and actor, for that matter, are actually really subtle and really good at points. Like watching his eyebrows, those eyebrow movements are always perfectly timed. They are. Yeah, Donjo is great. I've I've come to appreciate him more and more as the show has progressed. I and I guess uh Malib hasn't really changed his character very much. So it's it's tough to say. Like we picked our favorite characters kind of at the at the start out, but I'd I'd say that um as the skits have progressed 
forward, Donjo's Donjo's had more and more humorous things happening with him and that he's been involved in. He's such a ladies' man. He is sort of. He's also incontinent. Which <laughs> he's <laughs> yes. willing to just say immediately into a crowd of women. He's like, You still down? You still wanna hang out? All four of us? We going? <laughs> So I mean, if he's if he's smooth enough to get that that down and okay with the rest of the group, then there you go. He he's got quite the ability of charm. I wonder if he's been wearing like a diaper underneath that loose, <laughs> that loose pair of pants this entire time. Did you like how he uh, just loses the uh, sideburns as uh, as as soon as the moment becomes opportune to do so? And then he gets him back just as easily through <laughs> just sheer focuses willpower. Focuses him back just, in, yeah. That edit's also like really bad and really good. Like it's intentionally it's yeah. visibly bad, bad which makes it hilarious. Yeah, I did not mind that. I liked the fact around that point that um, when Yoshihiro Yoshihiko was Yoshihiko. getting at, yeah. getting the band back together. He was talking to Murasaki and she was and he's like, You can't abandon the quest. And she's like, You abandon the quest like every other episode. <laughs> <laughs> How is this not wrong? You just abandoned the quest yesterday when you wouldn't leave your apartment. He was so honest about that too. Just like, so how far have you gotten? I, I haven't, haven't left, left my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I I had to love that the uh the luxuries of owning an apartment with air conditioning was just too much for him to overcome. Yeah. <laughs> and I, being I able to order food. That whole issue of the whole corruption, as you could say, that they face in the modern Japanese city or Japanese or n- not the actual modern Japanese city. Cause it seems like it was actually a distorted creation, but basically Tokyo uh, mm-hmm. That was actually really good. I I did really enjoy all of the characters going down their own paths, and granted, like Yoshihiko being the like the the giant doofus of the group has that whole issue with spending all of his money in his in his elaborate apartment that he gets because it'll impress ladies, but happens to never bring a lady to said apartment. <laughs> well, because if you never leave the apartment, you can never bring a lady <laughs> home to it. the The thing is, it's like. I think that the, uh, what is it, the 11th episode in which you should never fall in love with a maid is, is probably the best one I've seen. Like, that one had satisfying jokes and humor from start to finish for me, especially when he bumps into the Buddha at his new job. <laughs> I mean, I, the sad part is, is like, you need a lot of the character building or at least a kind of good idea of each character in order for that episode to really land. So it's not like you could just suggest to somebody like watch this episode outright, but it's, Makes it's sense. by far the, the funniest and, and great execution of like everybody's character traits that makes them funny. Um, Melob getting trapped in the maid cafe or not getting trapped, but like setting up residence more or less was hilarious and so expected of it, of an outcome. Like, as soon as you see it, you're just like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. This is where he would be. Yep. And let's be real. His ability there is actually pretty solid. Uh, now I can't remember the English uh, sub they gave for it, but it's... Frizzo? Frizzo? Frizzo. Frizzo. Yeah. Frizzo. Which, by the way, like, how is Sounds that supposed pretty chilly. to be... Yeah, exactly. It sounds I, like it should be an ice I, spell. But so crickle I, could be like crackle, like yeah. crackle of a fire. Oh, so that it makes could sense. Be a flip of word association, and, I guess. And like, I got more from the frizzo or the frizzu of like frizzy hair when it's hot and dry out. <laughs> so uh, that was my first life. I thought that about that thought. too. So it, you're not the only one on that end. But yeah, they they really tied it together with the spells. Him using like him chanting that spell during the fight scene with Frieza yeah with (laughs) yes he actually started making useful spells through the use of overcasting right but he still acknowledges that they're useless at the very end when 
he's like, well, I think I'm going to go to the West and learn a spell that's actually useful. I think it's because he was um, Jelly of Mirasaki. And yeah, having a res spell. spell. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my gosh, that's right. Now that I think about it, the other gag that I'm so glad that they called attention to Murasaki's fake bird and that she faked oh, yeah. tweeting for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it actually works at uh at yeah, provoking and it the parrot attracts the Halo Halo bird. Yeah, the parrot. <laughs> Murasaki's uh temptation within modern Japan is also great where she becomes a model and then becomes an actress and she's obviously and terrible at acting I, yeah i love the fact she's like she's acting while acting like she's acting but she's terrible at acting like while acting too do you use acting too much i got lost real bad <laughs> yeah but i'll agree it is funny it's the same way that uh in persona 5 if you progress along um at a certain point, like you get exposed to on wanting to be an actress and you're just like, oh my God, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. But she's <laughs> gung ho about it anyway, even though she's the worst actress. I, I don't know if terrible. Cookie's that far in, but it, it becomes no. pretty obvious that, you know, of all like not not to go on a tangent in Persona 5, but your entire cast of characters have roles in that game that you would expect out of like Ocean's Eleven. And that that is specifically Ans right there. That's the one. she's supposed to be the diversion, but she's the worst actress. Basically, Dang, I'm gonna have to beat this game. <laughs> and, and yeah, you do. And and Ryuji is totally the arms, like or the the, the muscle. muscle. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's the tank. He's the one who has like 400 something health in my crew, at least. Anyway, this is this is not Yusha Yoshihiko. Sorry. I forgive you. And we finally meet the Demon King, which I was really sad by his mask. Yeah, I wanted to see his face. Before but we I... get there, though. Okay. Uh, his introduction is perfect, and that's what makes it all the more a big lit down. Because in the <laughs> opening scene, it's an obvious call out to Inspector Gadget's villain. Right, with mm-hmm. the cat... And the distorted voice. And then they yeah. stop using the distorted voice, which like I I don't understand. But then you hear his voice and it's Frieza. Wait, it's it's Frieza's VO? It's it's Frieza's voice actor, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's no that that's totally why, makes sense. Yeah, that's <laughs> and the mask too kind of works for it then. But I heard it, I'm like, holy shit. That's Frieza. Like this is the Japanese voice actor for Frieza in, in Dragon Ball Z. It's like, like that is the most it, evil yeah. voice I know. <laughs> huh. Go figure. Yeah, you're right. Now I actually really think about it. That did sound a lot like Frieza. That's right. I checked it on IMDB just to be sure and and of course it is. It's the Japanese voice actor for Frieza since pretty much the very beginning. Well, I guess watching Dragon Ball Super really paid off for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. I'm so behind now, and it's not because of your shit talking, but I sure that hasn't helped. I'm sure that hasn't <laughs> helped with me like catching up and paying attention. You mean like the episode where they fight a bunch of furries? Yeah. Well, <laughs> totally worth it. I mean, at least you got to see that during the Tournament of Power. I watched a bunch of the filler, and then I think they started the Tournament of Power, and I haven't caught up yet. I, so literally, I slogged through filler and you got the good stuff and whined about it. I want the <laughs> record to know that Scott be- like thinks that beating up furries is the good stuff. Well, it is Dragon Ball, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two in one hand, six in the other. I mean, I just want to see the hair color change another time. That's all I need anymore. They they hooked me early at childhood, and, and now I'm along for the ride. I know that feeling. I'm almost caught up yeah. on One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do know that feeling, then. You you probably know it a lot worse than I do. <laughs> oh, so yeah. A couple, the, uh, couple the... 600 episodes worse. Along with the Devil King, though, we also get a super secretary named Gordon who serves as like the right hand man of uh, Gallius who is the demon king 
Yep. Oh, that's right. That's right. Gordon nukes them when they're about to go up to their meeting because they have to get through him first. And that's what drives them to meet the uh, the hero. previous hero. Yeah. Who just happens to be the spitting image of Yoshihiko's dad <laughs> and definitely not an actor with a recycled role. <laughs> Yeah, Did I, it I also wasn't... kind of remind you of Kill Bill? The fact that he's a swords master who's running his own uh, sushi shop? I See, never. I need I... to rewatch that series. Yeah, I didn't connect uh, the dots there. I'm wondering if oh, it's man. supposed to be a reference to it. I mean, no, it could that, It be. makes sense. Yeah. I loved how he was denying being the hero the entire time though that's stabbing the fish with the sword he just it's like you're not even you're not it's, it'd be easier to use one of the butcher knife guy it's you're not yeah. even you're not even cutting it anymore you're just kind of slopping it around what was it they were like you're just smooshing the fish <laughs> there we go that's what it was it's just like and yeah they, he doesn't get busted until he has an ogre or whatever or uh like cyclops come out the back and start helping him with his work he's like oh well i I guess the jig is up. It's like, well, you were just stabbing a fish with a sword. Matter was like, you weren't even really trying to hide it. Yeah. It it just felt like it went a little flat, that whole scene, though. Uh, yeah. Like, when he yeah. brings out the torch to grill the fish, uh, he doesn't... <clears throat> like, he could have just as easily, or they being the creators could have had him put up a hand and had him cast magic to do so. That was instead of was just really holding a for. shield. Yeah. Right. And and then hold the shield as a way to, you know, like protect yourself. Like pull all of it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping that he would actually use uh cuz did we know about Frizo about this time? Frizo? Frizo? Um no, yeah, we I did. I can't remember. Yeah, we did, because that was the episode before. So it would have been so great if he was just like, I'm going to grow this fist. Frizu, 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 frizu. Oh, <laughs> if he actually <laughs> used the same spell? That would, yes, that would be used really the same funny. spell in, yeah, that uh, yeah, would be a much better thing. But either way. Demon King fight. Yeah, if you want to talk about lackluster. So I just, I didn't didn't find it all that engaging at all until he he was prying the back support from the crock up and forward so he could <laughs> slip his slip his shoes off and kick him into the demon king's eye that was i, the I best appreciated part that. that especially that he was putting that much force in and they added like metal sound effects the sound effect mixed with his acting was actually really good. Like it was, it was obviously fake because we know how Crocs work, but otherwise would have been completely convincing had we not known how Crocs that work. they were rubber shoes <laughs> spray painted to be a shiny gold color. Yep, super sad that it wasn't just like a normal guy or even you know Yoshihiko's dad again. As oh, for the uh, Demon King? Yeah. Yeah, I thought, I honestly thought he was just going to be a businessman. Like, since they set him up in sort of a high rise, he had a normal assistant and he had the cat on his lap and you saw the human hand. I was like, oh, well, this guy's just going to be a corporate type. I thought he was actually going to be, be fun. the Buddha, or at least the Buddha's actor. I kind of, I, yeah, I tried here. to consider that too. Yeah. Because the way the Buddha's talking about the Demon King at points is just like, He's more frustrated with the Demon King than actually, like, trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, he's going to be like the Buddha's brother. That's just what this is going to end up being. Right. They're that. two two competing, uh, I guess, gods that are just having a, a tiff with one another. And so he decides to send Yoshihiko, which I would say is probably the less effective use of <laughs> powers. <laughs> than what the Demon King has available to him. But. And given the available budget they had, it wouldn't have surprised me that if it would have been the same actor with the same mannerisms, but just... And just a beard or something, or horns. Yeah, exactly. Some way to distinguish. And then they would call out like, wait, Buddha? Where's Buddha? Like, yeah. no, no, I'm not Buddha, but... <laughs> just like how they did it with, you know, Yoshiko's father and the le yeah. legendary hero. And that actor, uh, 
what Jiro Sato, like, I, I just think he's hilarious. His dialogue is so funny. He'd just do that. No, 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 no. Listen, no. listen, listen, listen. No, yeah. Listen, listen, okay, 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 okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not the demon king. All right, all right. <laughs> you see, you see, I understand. Okay, okay. Buddha beans and erases their memory. <laughs> like they could have played it really well. God, he's so funny though. I loved it when he was taking when uh, Yoshihiro was Yoshihiko was taking his order, and. Uh, He's ordering black edamame just to get him to pay attention. And he's like, <laughs> he's like don't, with, be, don't be happy about this. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and with Yoshihiko too, just he kept going. And I'm like, I've never heard of black edamame. Maybe I'll have to try it. I didn't <laughs> think it was a thing, but obviously that's not part of the joke. And then you find out that it is. I was like, oh, not, now I feel a little, little dumb. Just a little dumb. And a bit sad. You uh, yeah, and sad. Now. I was like, I guess there's only green edamame. Well, sad. Uh, Apparently, black edamame does exist. Is it burnt green it's edamame? a unique <laughs> variety of edamame that is prized in Japan for its distinctive sweet flavor. Seapoint Farms has taken these delicious black soybeans and coated them with crunchy sea salt goodness. Hmm. Literally the first hit on Google. That's right. Seapoint <laughs> Farms crunchy coated premium black edamame. 3.5 ounce package. Is that what you're looking at, Neil? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you get your black edamame, and hopefully it's not nearly as depressing as white barbecue sauce. Speaking of, oh, gross. Did you say white barbecue sauce? Yeah, I heard about it on the show Master of None by Aziz. What's his name from? Aziz Ansari, right? Yeah. 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 They, they had a big, like, skit about white barbecue sauce and i found out it was real yeah it's real oh so gross. is it now we're back to, is it just <laughs> is it's it a just, vinegar based it's yeah but it's sauce. got it's got mayonnaise and horseradish oh yeah, it's not good it's not good I had some in iowa and i was like i was like oh my god there's white barbecue sauce here i gotta have it gotta put it on bleh. Is it for the so, people that really like sea salt and vinegar chips? And I'm not saying like I, really like. I really like sea salt and vinegar chips. Is that salt and vinegar? Oh, psh. yeah, salt and vinegar. Sorry, no, yeah, my that's chips a... use sea salt and vinegar. Okay, I don't know what type of bullshit chips you eat, <laughs> but okay. Not all of us can afford that bougie budget like you. But yeah, I'll agree too. Like that sounds super gross to me and salt and vinegar chips are my default pick no matter what. Like I'll oh, take yeah. the shittiest salt and vinegar chips <laughs> over any other better quality of a different type of chip if it's available. So I 100% even, agree, Scott. Even if it's like the off-brand Pringles. If it's like off-brand sea salt Lay's versus like a good kettle cooked in-house chip. I'll still probably take the sea salt and vinegar. The I'm only going, thing I can think of that would go, uh, that I'd probably pick over that is cracked black pepper on chips is actually super fucking good. Ooh, yeah, yeah. But I'll you have to almost never that. find that. It's it, Cookie, you'd probably dig it. I'm thinking you'd like it. I probably would. I'm, I'm not that picky. But yes, so to describe the entire series of Yusho Yorihiko, how would you use do it in like three sentences nail go okay so it's kind of like barbecue chips you know you can enjoy it and stop small amounts. stop <laughs> try try again i don't want to hear this <laughs> yeah it's it's good but it's not great and you know it, it's something that i could imagine watching when it was televised or broadcast every now and then kind of like uh Venture Brothers or some Adult Swim show. It's but, not a show that you'd commit to. Yeah. But if you stumbled upon an episode and it happened to be a good one, you'd stick around. So keeping up with the Kardashians? Are we are we just giving it at that level? Just I've never up seen with the Kardashians. That. Man, don't. Don't. I ended up watching an episode because I was walking out of my parents house and they leave tvs on and it was on there and i was like i'm gonna turn this off 30 minutes later i was leaving their house because i finished the epping episode 
And I'm like, I don't know what happened. I'm ashamed and confused. There is this uh, chick at the old uh, apartments that I used to live at, and she would she would go into the uh, gym, turn on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and then just literally put any workout I've ever done to shame in like 30 minutes. And she'd bounce, and so, but she'd just leave the TV on. She'd always leave without turning it off, and sometimes I couldn't find the remote, so I'd be like stuck with that on. But I'd take out my earbuds if I ever saw Kanye in it. Because I like seeing him pout when he's around all the Kardashians, oh, just being like, "Damn, these people fucking suck." But yeah, I, that's that's all the experience I have. My I favorite know. episode is there in like Aspen or something. I'm trying. I think it's Aspen, and and Kanye's just in this big ass puffy coat, looking sad and mopey. And I'm just like, <laughs> I understand you. I totally get it, man. <laughs> it's tough. I knew he would. Uh, had married Kim Kardashian, but it never occurred to me that he would be in that show. Yeah, he. He's, I mean, he's also got to keep up with the Kardashians. That's right. Man, just fuck that. Ugh. Superstar family. I I want to explain that woman that was working out in your gym. Uh, the reason she was able to do these killer workouts is because she absolutely hates the Kardashians. So she's taking all of that fervor that rage and malice and, and putting it towards, you know, the ripped. weights. Yeah, she was, I mean, she was ripped. If I, if I could look like that girl, I would. <laughs> so I guess I need to hate the Kardashians more. Oh Because she had just... some fire. Like this, this girl, I, it's one of those things where you're just like, man, I feel kind of sad about me now. Because this, this person's, you know, I should be able to keep up. I can't. There's no way I can. So, so Scott, do you know, like, caricatures of women bodybuilders? Caricatures of them? I mean, yes. I know what a woman bodybuilder looks like. Now, just imagine a caricature of a woman bodybuilder and then put a caricature of your face on it. And as soon as you said you wanted to be her, that's immediately what popped in my head. <laughs> I mean that is pretty funny <laughs> and I was just like oh this is great this needs to happen and exist so Cookie how did you feel about these 12 episodes or season 1 of Yusha Yoshihiko mm. so it does a really good job as short YouTube clips yeah yeah and honestly, it I've never actually there uh you know how you you know how you watch something and you decide you don't want to watch it anymore and you stop watching it? I wasn't allowed to do that with this <laughs> because right. you were committed through <laughs> us. <laughs> but I don't actually have that like happen ever because i never get tired of a show because i just naturally drop off on it and i yeah. definitely hit that spot with this show yeah it didn't help that, that we were forcing ourselves to watch three episodes a week that's three times more content than a normal person would have taken for the series too because when it's airing it, it's only you know show, uh, airing one episode a week I guess that makes sense, but even one episode a week I wouldn't have been able to do, and any more time uh, separated from that would have been confusing. Yeah, it's a show. Well, any closing thoughts before we uh, put this to rest? I, I stand on the record. Uh, let this be known that I do not believe we should pick up another Let's Watch for at least a couple weeks. I'm, I second that. Well, I'm fine with this. Can it'll be tricky to do it this. anyway with our big uh, total eclipse party happening in the next month. So maybe oh, yeah. we can do it after that. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go and listen to total eclipse of the heart. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also wanted to ask, did you just not want my opinion of a summary or... I thought, I thought you gave it. Yeah. But I wasn't it? sure oh. and then and then and then Neil just kind of went with it and I was like, fuck it. 
I think okay. I made the mistake of hijacking Niels and therefore taking away my own right <laughs> to do it. <laughs> I'd say very quickly that I don't regret watching this, but I could have easily never watched it and been fine. And this show is would definitely do really well if someone curated the best clips from it and put it into kind of a its own skit reel. comedy show. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, if you just cut out the bad skits and left in the good ones, I really don't think there's enough storyline for us to miss anything that important or to care about. And it would be okay even if it had no conclusion. Like It would just be amusing in its own right. Even if they never meet the Demon King, because it's not a good skit. But yeah, they could have ended with episode 11. That would have been fine. Just turns Actually, out Japan's great. Looks like we're stuck here. <laughs> no, they, they, they would have done the Demon King, but only like the very end when he was flicking off the Crocs and <laughs> priming them. So it would have been yeah. like, Japan's great. Hard cut to him priming <laughs> Crocs and then kicking them off into a giant amorphous beast mm-hmm. credits yusha yoki yusha yoshihiko a show <laughs> about crocs fancy ramen gives it a omake Give, out of omake gives it two two out of five that's fair yeah yeah two I, out of five that's i don't think it's a bad show i don't think it's necessarily good enough to say that it's average either because it yeah it's got too many uh dull spots but two out of five i mean that's not the worst thing it could be ign that's a 7.6 out of 10 (laughs) (laughs) oh golly it's been Wait, a great really? uh, yeah, and uh, if you have comments, questions, or concerns regarding Yushi Yoshihiko, we not, might not be able to talk too much more <laughs> about him at this point, but you could send them in to podcast at fancyramen dot com. Also, you can go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, and comment on the Apple Podcast. Matter of fact, the Apple Podcast is the best way to get Fancy Ramen known and out there. You want more Fancy Ramen content? Go ahead. Spread the word of Fancy Ramen. We'll make more stuff. You just need to tell us what to make. Omake! Omake.